using the son of T1 with two relays, but the process is the same for all versions of the device and also for other Wi-Fi relays such as the Shelly as they all use the ESP8266 chip. You can easily open the case of the device like so and after we've done that, gently separate the top part of the board from the bottom. The son of devices have their own Chinese firmware and if we want it to have HomeKit support and make it useful, we need to change its software. This is the board we will be working with. As you can see, it has a serial port for flashing and debugging. can easily connect to it without soldering. This next part I have covered in another video, so please head over there to watch it first and then continue with the next steps. We then need to open our flashing tool of choice and prepare it for flashing. To put the board in flash mode, which is required for flashing, first disconnect the serial adapter. Then I'll be using a cable that came with my multimeter. With that cable, we need to connect ground to a pin named R19 while booting. I will hold the cable with one hand, while with the other I connect the flashing adapter to my computer. And while doing so, making sure to have a steady connection to the board. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds after boot and then release. After that, the board should be unresponsive and we can continue by hitting flash on the computer. When flashing is complete, reboot the board by reconnecting it to power. For initial setup, it will go into AP mode and we can now connect to it using Wi-Fi. Or at least we should be. Okay, we are connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot, but it won't load the page. This is a known bug which has been fixed, but if you're facing the same issue, just open a new browser tab and navigate to this address. Now we can go ahead and set it up by setting a config.json which you can find in the video blog post. I have posted a bunch of options for you to choose from, depending on your needs. Next, connect it to your home network and hit save. It will then reboot and begin downloading the latest version of the firmware, so give it at least 5 minutes time. The device will be unresponsive during this process. After it has done loading, we can proceed with adding it to HomeKit using the Home app. This step requires an iOS device. After adding in, you can choose if it should be a fan, a light or a switch, as well as a name and a room to be placed in. You can change all of these afterwards.
after we verified that it's all working well, we can close the device and go mount it. Wired up, you need a positive wire, which every light switch has, a wire or wires that go to the light, and a neutral wire. Most traditional light switches don't have a neutral wire, like mine, and I have taken neutral from this outlet here. If you can't get a neutral to the switch, another option is to use the Sonoff T4 EU1C, which doesn't require a neutral. I will soon make a video on this one, but the procedure should be the same. When working with electricity, always turn off the breaker and make sure that there is no current. Mains voltage could kill you. It's always good to crimp cable ends for a more secure grip. After you connect it, turn on the power from the breaker and check if it works well. Always good, turn off the power again and mount it properly. And now I will show you how to get more smarts from a smart switch. For this step, you need to go to the IP address or host name of the device. The host name is the default device name .loco or .lan, depending on your network configuration. You can also find its IP address in your router settings or using Thing, for example. To be able to access these settings, you need to put the device in setup mode. And by default, to do that, you need to quickly turn on and off the device seven times. It is easier to do it on an iOS device. When the device enters setup mode, it will be unresponsive in HomeKit and we can reload the page. Then you can set any of the other JSON configs I have listed, or you can write your own. Simply replace the old one and hit save. With this configuration, we can program the buttons to do more things on double tap or long press. Using programmable buttons in HomeKit gives you a slight delay because it is controlled by your HomeKit hub rather than locally on the smart switch but you can program them to do whatever you want, including more complicated automations. For example, the way I have mine is one button controlling the relay directly and the other turns on the water heater on long press and on single tap, it turns on the fan for a set time. All this is configurable in the home app. Keep in mind that the sound of T1 has only two amp relays, which can technically withstand 440 watts, but really you shouldn't put more than 300 watt loads on it. Hey, turn off the lights.